The Tale of Hydrangea Once upon the ancient times, when the earth was still in its infancy, hunting and gathering were the sole activities for tribe survival. Expanding territory was essential to increase the power of every single tribe. The most chaotic era in human history began then, marking the emergence of 13 tribes. The clash between them happened for years without end, and for reasons that no one remembered. In that predicament, 13 chiefs have organized a public meeting to devise a peaceful solution. If this war is going to end without any victor, then the largest land in the east must belong to our tribe. The largest tribe out there! No, you can't have it. Our tribe will decide how the land will be divided, for we're the strongest among the tribes. We have always come out on top in every hunt. And you really think that we're going to agree with that? No tribe has more men than us. All the decisions must ultimately belong to our tribe. Your tribe this, your tribe that. If this goes on, then why should our tribe bother reconciling with yours? Alas, the meeting did not resolve a single thing, followed by the bloodiest war which had erupted among the 13 tribes. And like a curse, not a single man made it out alive, leaving all the mothers, wives, and children to live in misery. Please God, we won't survive like this. Please help us. If the war keeps dragging on like this, there won't be any men left in the world without them. How can elderly and frail women like us survive now? Please God, have mercy on us. Free us from all these horrible deaths. Please end this chaotic time that we're living in. Time is running out for our people. Please God, save us from this misery. <gasps> Look, it seems the God has finally heard our pleas. The God has manifested. It is the Goddess of Light. Sun Goddess! Rest assured, for I, Sol the Sun Goddess, am here. This war shall cease immediately. Oh, thank you, dear Goddess! Thank you for your blessing! Listen, warriors. I'm here to put an end to this war. From now on, with all my power, I command you to cease all the conflicts immediately, whatever it is. I declare the 13 tribes will be unified as one, and I shall be the supreme ruler over all. You must live harmoniously with each other. Anyone who disobeys my commands shall be properly punished. Have you all heard what I said? Yes, yes sir, we, we will obey you. you. The war is finally over! The peaceful era that we have been longing for has finally come! Ever since so, the Sun Goddess united the tribes. Everyone's lives have been filled with joy and happiness. No more hunger, no more suffering. Instead, it's filled with cheers and laughter, with abundant harvest, festivals that are held year-round to satisfy the people. Everyone is grateful to the Goddess, and then, out of the blue, the Goddess causes them to be startled. Six years later Since the war, I have stayed on Earth for six years. It's about time for me to return. But before I leave, a girl shall be chosen as the Sybil to take my place in this realm in order to maintain the stability on Earth and to avoid war and misery like before. The Sybil must be treated with the same respect as if she were me on this Earth. I wish, my goddess. goddess. But dear goddess. But dear goddess. But dear goddess, how will a girl be chosen as the next symbol? The Sybil must be a 16 years old virgin, who is of pure heart, and she must be one of the most beautiful girls among the tribe. Hmm, a 16 years old virgin, and the most beautiful on earth. Who shall have the honor of becoming the Sybil? Let us begin now. Every virgin 16 years old girl present, step forward.
as the scepter lay in the hands of the girl, like a miracle, everything around her suddenly changed. Her body began to transform. Once a beautiful girl, now radiant with sunshine, like an angel falling from the heavens. Her purity and chastity are symbolized for the virtue that a Sybil must have. We humbly, humbly bow, bow down, down to, to the Sybil. This is the first Sybil I have chosen myself. From now on, she shall be worshipped by all of you. But being a Sybil comes with a price. She must remain at the altar to pray for everyone. And she must not get married nor have children. If she disobeys, the Sybil will suffer the curse of separation and agonizing torment. Every six years, another Sybil shall be selected. But everything I have said shall remain. We will not forget, Goddess of the Sun. From that moment, every six years, a selection of the next Sybil will be held. The one ascending to the role will hold all power and be worshipped like the Sun Goddess herself. Not only that, but upon becoming the Sybil, girls already beautiful would become even more astonishing and immediately purified. Time passed in a blink. The day of the 127 Sybil selection soon arrived. The selection of this year's Sybil. These are the chosen three most beautiful girls from the three tribes. Leah from the Gaia tribe, Julie from the Crimson Top tribe, and Susan from the Great Locks tribe. These are the three candidates. The chosen one is yet to be selected. Therefore, as always, whoever gets chosen by the scepter will be the chosen one by the god's will. She will be an honor for both her family and the whole tribe. To whoever is chosen, may luck be with you all. All you need to do now is to return and wait for that day. Um, Chief, is it possible for me to withdraw from this event? Huh? Why does she want to withdraw? To become the Sybil is every girl's dream! Leah, what on earth are you saying? You are a member of our tribe. To become the Sybil is obligatory. But I... Enough. No buts, Leah. You are not only the pride of your family, but also of our entire tribe. But, but, I... I just want to be an average girl living a normal life. How inconsiderate, Leah. You have become insolent. How dare you look down on the honor that our tribe meant for you. Do you know how many girls desire to be in your position? Then, please, my chief, if this is truly what the others desire, please let them have this esteemed position. Leah, you, you are shameless. You know very well what the goddess had said. A civil must be the purest, most beautiful 16-year-old virgin girl in our entire tribe. Does every single member of our tribe mean nothing to you? Of course not. You guys are everything to me. Listen, Leah. If you abandon this position, your family would never be able to live a peaceful, normal life again. Keep that in mind. <laughs> this year's Sybil will inevitably belong to Orlea. She has long been the fairest girl in all of the tribe. Right you are, dear. Our daughter will bring honor to our family and the entire tribe. Father, mother, is it okay for me not to become the Sybil? I... I really don't want that position, you see. I love Eric. I want to have a family with him. Oh, how dare you say such a thing? Don't you remember what the chief has said? Behave yourself. Better not make me lose my temper again. I've had enough with this. From now on, you are not allowed to be in love with anyone. What are you saying? You are going to become the Sybil. Only then will our tribe become the strongest. You must break up with Eric the moment the Skeptor chooses you. You won't be able to love anyone. I won't allow it. You shall not have any affairs before the moment comes. Please, mother, father, don't separate us. 
We have long been deeply in love with each other. We can't live without each other. Father, mother, please. But if I become the Sybil, I would have to live in the altar forever. I really don't want power. I just want to be with the one that I love. Please, don't make us separate each other. Do you really think that anyone can have your privilege? There's no other girl of any tribe who can match your beauty. You were born to be a civil. You have to do it for us, for our tribe. No, this isn't fair. We haven't done anything wrong. There's no reason for us to be separated. We will be together forever. Enough. Why are you still standing there? Break them up now. Exile Eric from the village and lock Leo up in a cell. Don't let them ever see each other. Yes, Chief! No. No! Let me go! Let me go! To ensure that everything went well for the Sybil, Eric was expelled from that village right on that night. Leo was detained and guarded extremely closely, waiting for the day she and the girls from other tribes would compete to become the Sybil of the Earth. Time flies. The destined day has finally arrived. With a flurry of activity, the girls from various tribes rushed to claim the Skepta. However, none of them succeeded as the Skepta just simply fluttered away. Apparently, the Goddess of Light was not yet content. Meanwhile, only Leah remained unmoved. The role of the Sybil didn't interest her. There was only the image of Eric in her heart. The Scepter will select the purest girl out there. The most beautiful girl with the most noble soul will bestow its power and be eternally worshipped. Goddess of Light, please, please, reject me. Goddess of Light, please, please don't choose the girl I love. be together. Oh, Eric, where are you now? Do you feel the pain I'm feeling in my heart? There she is, the Sybil. She is the one the goddess has chosen. She looks so beautiful and kind-hearted. Oh my, our Leah has been chosen, dear. <laughs> it's a dream come true. Our daughter is a Sybil. Thank you, goddess of life. Thank you so much. <laughs> At last, from now on, our tribe, the Gaia tribe, will become the strongest tribe on this earth. <laughs> we bow to you, the next Sybil. We beg you, Sybil Leah. We bow to you, the next Sybil. To protect us. To pray for us. Since becoming a Sybil, Leah had to live in the altar. But she never ceased to miss Eric, her one true love. Every single day, Leah endures the excruciating yearning. Eric? <gasps> oh, how I miss you so. Where are you? Have you left me here all alone? Eric, are you willing to let me live in this altar forever? How can I live without you? Six years later Before we know it, six years have gone by under the reign of Sybil Leah. The tribes had lived happily, but never once did she feel the same, and no one seemed to care about that, until one day. Leah, <gasps> Leah my love. Eric, are you here? But how did you manage to get in here? I miss you so much, Leah. Oh, so do I, my love. Where have you been all this time? I have tried so many times to sneak into the altar to see you. There are so many guards. I had to stay in the forest for a great moment. We don't have much time. Run with me, Leah. <laughs> Take me with you. I'm not afraid anymore. I've had enough of this curse. Everything will be alright as long as we're together. For all these years, I've been giving up my youth for the sake of my tribe, but not anymore. Then I will see you here tonight. We will leave then, together. 
Just as night falls, Eric and Leah hand in hand ran off the altar. They ran through the shadowy forest and continued to run while facing countless dangers. <laughs> Are you alright, Leah? This is bad. You're badly injured. Let me carry you. The forest trail was dark and treacherous, and Eric had to carry the injured Leah making their escape all the more challenging. But with the fear of being separated, the young man spared no effort to carry Leah across the forest. Have some water, Leah. Your injury is getting worse. Maybe we should take a rest before continuing. No, my love, we must go now. The faster the better. They might catch up with us at any moment. I don't think I can walk anymore, Eric. Go without me. They might kill you if they catch us. You will be sentenced to death and all because of me. Keep running, Eric. No, I will never leave you again. I've already lost you once. I will not let myself lose you again, no matter what. Here, let me carry you. Stop being so stubborn, Eric. I'm the Sybil. They won't let anything happen to me. But if they caught you with me now, you... You won't survive! Eric, behind you! No! Leah! 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 Should have been me! Why? Why did you take that arrow? There's so much blood. It should be in great pain, aren't you? Please! Let this all be just a bad nightmare. Please, God! I don't need anything else! I don't care what happens to me! Please save my Leah! It shouldn't be like this. It can't be like this. Don't leave me, Leah. Run, Eric. <laughs> Run before they get here. No, no. I won't go anywhere. We're meant to be together. <laughs> it took us over six years to see each other again. All for six years, how I long to see you. And our first meeting after six years of suffering is also our last. How ironic. I will die, Eric, and this will be our last moment together. Leah, Leah, stay with me, my love. Please, say something. Please, you can't just leave me like this. Talk to me, Leah. Don't scare me like that, Leah. I have to go now. I don't have enough strength left to say to you these words, but don't worry, my love. I will not let our final moments play out in agony and despair. Leah, you're still alive. You're looking at me, aren't you? Look at me, Leah. Talk to me. I love you, Leah. I will always love you. Leah. Eric, with all my power as the Sybil, I will use everything I have left to give you one last gift for me, for you, and for our love. I have to leave now, but my death is just a new beginning, so don't hurt too much, will you? Farewell, my one true love. Leo! <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> A moving scene unfolded before Eric's eyes. Leah's figure slowly vanishes, but from her ashes, millions of flowers started to bloom created from smaller flower petals. They resembled a spherical form, the field soon carpeted by its color, pure white. Leah! My love! Leah! Leah! <laughs> the strange flower bloomed around Eric, hugging him. No doubt by the magic of the woman he loves. Tormented, Eric is unable to move. He stays there with the white flower. The pure white resembled not only the Sybil's purity, 
but their innocent love. Leia, you're the only one I will ever love. Although we can't escape the curse, believe me, I will never leave you alone again. We will never be separated. With profound grief, along with the one he loves, Eric also passes away. The remnants of his life bled into the bed of flowers, creating different colors apart from the pure white. The blossoms like a narrator, telling the love story. The innocent white, the passionate red, and the faithful lilac. Nowadays, people know that flower as the High Trencher. <laughs>